Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Age of Tesla. Today we're going to be reviewing a new product that I just purchased today. Uh, it's a WD My Cloud Mirror. Um, when I purchased at the time, it says four terabytes on there. I was thinking there was four, two drives of four terabytes, but actually it is two two terabyte drives for a total of four terabytes. The uh, reason why I bought this today is because, number one, I have a lot of space being taken up by photos. I'm sure you guys are having the same problem. Um, this is another way of alleviating that. Instead of paying more money through iCloud or through any other services I believe that Windows might provide or, or anything of that nature, this one actually keeps it private in your own house. And the benefit of having a mirror drive using RAID 1 is the fact that if one drive fails, the other drive is still operational and running, so you would never really lose your data unless in a rare chance that both drives go off. So today we're going to unbox this today and we're going to go through it and see what it comes with and also how to do the setup process. All right. So let's start by on opening it, see what we got inside. Hello. Meet your personal cloud. That's great. A little blue card. Pretty Inside, let's see what we have. We have the actual drive device. Comes really nicely packaged. We'll start from protected drive. You can see it's a lot thicker than any other external drive. Sealed up. And if you can see inside here real quick, you actually see two actual hard drives. The nice thing about these drives is later on, if they ever does fail, you can actually just replace the drive by opening it up. I don't know how easy it is to open it up. They usually try to uh, prevent you from doing that. But if you have any tech savvy, you can know how to do it. So let's get that out of its bag. Put that right there. Let's see what else we got in here. Other than that, empty box. We got this little toolbox here. Comes with a power supply. We're giving it power. And it comes with a nice Cat5 Ethernet cable. If you look on the back of this device here, you have two ports. Maybe we better stand. We have two ports here for USB 3.0, which is nice if you guys don't have uh, a switch or anything like that, or don't have any room in your in your router. You actually can plug in the USB to those routers that have the USB in the back and make it a wireless drive if necessary. But the best thing to do is actually just plug an Ethernet cable into your router and and go to the website. They do have a website where once you plug in your device and have it set on, it seems like I have to go to this website called mycloud.com/setup. And it will actually search for your device on your network and create an account for it and go from there. There is an iOS app uh, and I believe there's an Android app. But um, today I don't, I don't do Windows, so today we're going to talk about the iOS app uh, for, the, for the Apple. And we're going to download it from the iPhone and uh, we'll go from there. All right? Stay tuned. All right, so here's the hookup. We're going to start hooking it up. Right now I'm temporarily uh, reorganizing my stuff. So right now it's just sitting on a subwoofer and I have my Wi-Fi way up there. I don't know if you can see it could go into focus, but um, so I do have a, a yellow cable already running down to the bottom, which I'm going to actually use to plug it into. So let's go ahead and try to hook it all up and see where he goes. So the first one I'm going to do is give it a nice stand to put it on, plug in the power, give it a chance to boot up. Don't need this Ethernet cable, so we can just throw that aside. Grab the one I have already here. Plug it in, and you can see on both ports, all I have is power and ethernet, and that's it. You should be all set. Now we just have to go to the computer or to download the app and set up our account. So let's go forward and do that. All right, so here we are at the website. It's uh, mycloud.com slash setup. So go ahead and click get started. And it is searching for my device on my network. Hopefully I'm on my network, let's see. Where are you, Wi-Fi? Hiding from me, I see. Where's my Wi-Fi? Disappeared. As you can see, it says the system is booting up, so you have to please wait. I'm assuming you don't need a password, so let's just go ahead and hit login, if it allows me to log in. 
Choose whatever language you want. I speak English, so I'm going to choose English. And we're going to go ahead and set a password. All right. Let me go ahead and see if oh, it doesn't show you. So that's good. So I can put a password in. You guys will never know what it is. <laughs> All right, moving forward. All right, admin. You can put your first name. Why not? Let's do that. Tristan. All right, let me just blur that stuff out for now. All right, after you set up your uh, information, it's going to ask you if you want to auto update the firmware. You can leave it on or not, it's up to you. And then it gives you here, that's it. You have received an email to your mycloud.com account and our login information. And there it is. So now you can upload content, backup PC and Mac, access mobile apps. So let's go ahead and go to that. And it takes you to their website and shows you how to do it and where to share and you know, whatever all the other devices that they provide. So that's a simple, that's easy as that. Anybody can do it. It's a simple tutorial. Uh, really, I was really uh, impressed how easy it is. Let's go ahead to finish and see what it shows you. So this is, the, I guess, the main page of your, uh, of your device. It shows you that there's a firmware update that we're gonna go ahead and do. And it tells you that you have zero, zero, zero megabytes all like everything here. You have different users, so you can have different accounts. So if you are a family of five, like I am, you can have multiple users. So your kids eye all their photos and all their movies and everything that's on their, uh, on their laptops can be backed up to the external drive, so they'll never lose it. Uh, you can have shared folders where you can actually make a shared folder for people to get access to if they're on your network and they want to upload it. And then there's cloud access where you would have to add uh, different accounts for different people. And then if it uses Time Machine, you actually can have a Time Machine which will all back up there as well. And then this gives you more of the RAID profile under storage uh, where it could say auto rebuild. It gives you a little descriptions on how it works. And then finally apps. I think that's final. No, nope, there's more after that which you can actually have an HTTP server for downloads, an FTP server, and a P2P, all right? For you guys who don't know what that is, you can Google it. <laughs> uh, and then you can have your login types and, uh, you know, where is it going to. Settings, self-explanatory, you can actually just go ahead and change the device name if you need to, to whatever you like. I'm gonna think of something really cool, call it, not right now though. And then, of course, change your time. We are in Jersey, so we're gonna set it to the Eastern time zone. If I can find it, I believe it's negative five or plus five. Where is it at? New York. Why don't you just type New York? New York. Nope, that doesn't work. Where are you? There's Eastern right there. Negative five it is. All right. Times.windows.com, primary serve if you want. Cloud access, you can set up the access on here, turn it on, turn it off. USB content availability, basically that means you can actually just uh, access the info using it directly plugged into a USB drive. Energy saver, goes to sleep when you're not in use. Uh, time's out, five minutes. And Mac backups on, you can configure that, of course. But you have to select what folder you want it to go into. Uh, right now it's set to a 1.9 terabyte max because that's all we have is two gigabytes and about a, about a hundred gigabytes is used for for something don't know i should have bought the bigger one if they had they didn't really have it they had six terabyte or this utilities i guess to two check diagnostics scan the disk format the disk etc but let's go to firmware update there is one available let's go ahead and hit update now check out the release notes if you want i'll check that out later let's go to install and reboot and let it do its thing and that's pretty simple and that's it and then maybe later on we'll get into more uh, detail on how it works on the computer All right. here's a little note if you do decide on changing the device name or the in the device profile uh, please do so before you set any, any services up like uh, uh, was the iTunes server or if you're setting up any um, you know mul multimedia stuff like accounts like time machine uh, because you're gonna have to reset those things again after you change the name So make sure you do all the settings set everything the way exactly where you want it first before you proceed on start setting other things up like time machine A few other things that you should look into as far as if you're on a Mac um, From the actual support page from their website. They have software for Windows as well as Mac um, One of the good things you could download that I recommend doing is WD sync for Mac 
um, WD Drive Utilities for Mac and also WD Access for Mac. Uh, they're, they're, they're proprietary software that actually will help you kind of sync your files a lot easier. Um, and then instead of actually manually doing it yourself. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to set up Time Machine uh, on a Mac. So you go ahead and set up, once you have everything set up and did the firmware update and named your device, you wanna go ahead to the Apple System Preferences and go down to Time Machine, okay? Then we're gonna go ahead and select the backup disk. As you can see here, one's already selected up here at the top, says Time Machine, and I named it Inside Cloud, so go ahead and let's name it that and say use disk. It's connecting, this is where you would actually put in your name or your login name. Um, so let's go ahead, let me go ahead and put that in there. And there you go. You should be all set. Uh, it'll automatically start uh, backing everything up for you. Granted, I only have two terabytes, so I hopefully I don't use this thing up too fast and I have to get another drive to hook it up to. But um, it is just simple as that, guys. It's not, it's not a complicated procedure. That's one of the benefits I love uh, on Mac is uh, the simplicity everything is. So that's about it. Uh, you can download the actual app. It's called My Cloud App on the App Store. Download it and check it out. Use your login that you set up for yourself. And you should be able to back up all your photos and whatever else you need back, to the, back from, the, from your device to the cloud. If you guys have any questions or any comments, please feel free to comment below and subscribe. Uh, if you guys do need any uh, other videos made or any suggestions on certain devices, feel free, feel free to contact me and let me know. Uh, once again, I thank you for joining us here at Age of Tesla and stay tuned for more videos coming up.